All right, so welcome to the part two of run-on sentences. The first part, we covered the four basic types of sentences. We covered simple sentence and compound. And in part two, we're gonna cover complex sentences and compound complex sentences. And then keep in mind that the key reason that we are covering these items is so that we can avoid run-on sentences, which is the number one problem that students have in their writing. Okay, so let's go and start with the um, complex. So here, this handout is simple sentences and then compound sentences. And then the next page is complex sentences. All right, so there can be two kinds of complex sentences. One, adjective clause. It includes an adjective clause. And the other is a sentence that includes an adverb clause. Now the adjective clause example really doesn't come up a lot in writing as a problem. So you might just want to ignore this part. I'm just gonna cover it though. So a complex sentence with an adjective clause consists of a simple sentence and an adjective clause. So what is an adjective clause? Well, it usually begins with that, who, whose, whom, where, when, which. These are all adjective signal words, okay? So these clauses usually follow the word they modify. And so in the example, you'll see below, Mary, which is our subject, and our verb is is, ooh, I don't like this pen. Uh, the person, Mary is the person who dozes off continuously during church. So who is one of those adjective uh, signal words and signals that we're gonna have an adjective clause. Okay, most students don't have a trouble with this particular format. Susie is the girl whose brother takes his pet. So again, we have an adjective clause added to a simple sentence. All right, so this is uh, the area where you probably won't have a lot of problems with them, so don't worry so much about this. If your instructor points out that you are using the words that, who, whom, which, etc., cetera, uh, even some of these up here, and you're having problems with them, this is probably what the problem is. Okay, so notice that there are no commas in this, in these examples. Okay, example here, no commas, and example here, no commas. And that is because you don't need them. Now, a complex sentence with an adverb clause consists of a simple sentence and that adverb clause. Adverb clauses usually begin with such words as although, while, whereas, since, if, because. Because is a big one. Uh, as, because as, as soon as, after, when. Okay, those are the most common ones. They will signal the adverb clause. These are also uh, referred to as a dependent clause. Dependent clause. That's what I usually call them. All right, so these clauses are often movable. So you can begin the sentence with them or you can end the sentence with them. And so in this example, we have begun with an, a dependent word or an adjective word, uh, adjective clause signal word, or excuse me, adverb clause signal word. And then we have what looks like it might be a sentence because we have a subject, she, and then gets is the verb. But because we've begun with this I'm just going to call them dependent word. Dependent word from this list up here. We now need to have a comma because it's not a sentence by itself. If I just say, although she gets sick from them, you might say, well, well, what happens because she gets sick from, sick from them? We have to finish it with a independent clause, which is a simple sentence. Okay? So little Julie, subject, eats, verb, every mud pie she makes. Oh, poor Julie's eating mud pies. All right, so here's an example, another example. Jeff can pull the wings cleanly off 10 flies in only 30 seconds. When, and that's one of those dependent words, he concentrates on what he is doing. So if you look at this and analyze it, we say, well, Jeff is the subject, can pull is the verb. But then when we get to he, we're like, oh, well, he's a subject and uh, concentrates is another verb, but what separates the two is this dependent word, when, which then makes this an adverb clause. 
Okay, this is an adverb clause because of this word. And notice how we don't use a comma when we use it in the middle. When we start with our simple sentence here, our independent sentence, we don't need a comma. But on this example up here, the independent sentence started in the second half, the independent clause. And so therefore, we offset this dependent clause with a comma. All right, so here's the example of the same uh, example here. When, so when he concentrates, when he concentrates on what he is doing. Now, I can't put a period there because we're like, well, what happens? Well, we put a comma, and then we say Jeff can pull the wings cleanly off. So now this is based on order. If you start with the dependent word, then you use a comma. If you put that dependent word in the middle, then you don't. So adverb and adjective clauses cannot stand alone. They are what we consider fragments. So your teacher might write fragment above one of these if you put a period after it. And that's what we're talking about. It's probably either an adverb or an adjective clause, and it can't stand alone. They must be connected to a simple sentence. Clauses which cannot stand alone are called subordinate or dependent clauses. Okay? All right, so let's go through this some more because I know you might be confused. But the last point is that if a period is used after an adverb clause, this clause becomes a fragment. And that's where we get the problem, right there. When you have a problem is when a sentence is a fragment. So let's take a look at some instances. Oops. Uh, compound complex. Okay, oops. Erase those. Okay, so with compound complex sentences, they consist of two sentences. All right, that's good. And one or more adjective or adverb clauses. Okay, so now we have two sentences and two and, and one or more adjective or adverb clause. So it's really gonna look like this. It's gonna look like subject verb, subject verb, and then a subject verb. But one will be independent, two will be independent, and one will be a dependent or uh, a clause. Well, we can call them all dependents because they, they don't stand alone. They can't stand alone. All right, so the whole point of this discussion is sentence variety. So your goal should be to have sentence variety. So let's look at the example of what we were just talking about. So John climbed to the top of the tree, but Sue, subject, and then we have that who, so we're going to have an adjective clause, and then what does Sue do? She fell off halfway up, okay? So John climbed to the top of the tree, comma, so that's an independent clause by itself, but Sue, and if we just put our fingers on top of the who was a bit clumsy and just ignore that for a second, we have Sue fell off halfway, okay? So we have independent clause on the front, independent clause on the end, two simple sentences, but in the middle, we have what we call an adjective clause. And so in this case, they're going to be offset by commas. Comma, who, who, clumsy, comma. Now here's another example. Since he was five, ooh, that's one of those signal words, so we'll come back to that. Frank, subject, has broken, verb, three, finger, three fingers, two toes, and a kneecap. However, Ooh, another one of those fancy words. We'll talk about it in a second. He, subject, still walks, verb, across ice-covered telephone lines in the wintertime. Okay, so let's analyze what we have here. We have um, a subject verb. Oh, I forgot to identify he. Subject was verb. Okay, so we have three subject verb combinations. Two are independent and one is dependent, can't be standing alone. So we're starting with our, uh, our dependent word, <laughs> since, 
and it indicates that that can't stand alone. So if I put my finger up over Frank and then read what's in front of it, since he was five, it doesn't make sense. It's incomplete. So we use a comma. Then we have Frank is broken, right? But after Frank has broken his kneecap, we're using what we call the uh, conjunctive adverb, however. And when we do that, we have to put a semicolon before it and a comma after. So we have that. And then we have our final independent clause. Okay, so your goal is to not avoid these types of longer sentences, but to learn how to write them correctly to avoid run-on sentences and fragments. Okay, so let's look at the examples below. And what we're going to get is a variety of complex sentences. Okay, and we will also get a variety of uh, adjective and adverb clauses. Okay, so example, main idea, Larry attracts much attention. Larry's subject attracts much attention, attracts as a verb. Minor idea, Larry, subject, wears elephant ears and duck feet rented from a costume shop. And so when we say that we have a main idea and a minor idea, the main idea is just the key idea, if you, if you didn't get the part about him wearing elephant ears, that's fine. The main idea is just that Larry attracts much attention. Now, people might wonder why, and that's where we get our minor idea. But let's just combine this together. So, Larry, who wears elephant ears and duck feet rented from a costume shop, comma, attracts much attention. So in this case, we take the main idea, Larry, subject, and the verb, attracts, and we separate the two with this adjective clause, okay? And why is it an adjective clause? Because it begins with who. Who, what, remember that, that, those are the adjective clauses. All right, so another example, uh, another, another way we could do it is Instead of this way, we can say, when he wears elephant ears and duck feet rented from a costume shop. So now we started with when, which is one of those dependent words. And when we start a sentence with it, we need a comma. So at the end of this clause, I need a comma. And then I will just start with my subject and verb, Larry attracts. I can also put that dependent word in the middle, which means I don't need a comma. Larry attracts much attention because he wears elephant ears and duck feet rented from a costume shop. So that's pretty much it. So I'll go through. All right, we'll come back to the compound complex. All right, so we have some sentences here and we want to combine them together because we basically have two simple sentences. Okay, now when we combine the two sentences using coordinate or subordination, we are looking at those dependent clauses that we were just learned about. When we combine two sentences using coordination, that's when we go back to the two independent clauses that we talked about in part one. We're basically taking two simple sentences and joining them together with a coordinating conjunction. But with subordination, that's where we're using the adjective or adverb clauses to help. All right, so in the examples here, I have options to use both subordination and coordination. So let's see if we can figure this out. So in the example, Jim followed the directions carefully. Jim followed, subject, verb. Okay, the pie subject tasted great. So we have two simple sentences. And we want to join them together because as our, as our writing gets better and more sophisticated, we want to write more compound type sentences and even compound complex sentences, which we'll come back to in a minute. So we want to combine these. And we can either use subordination or coordination, but we want to make sure we do it correctly. So here we're going to use a subordinate clause or subordinate word dependent word. And so we'll start with because. So because Jim followed the directions carefully, comma. So remember, we start with the dependent word, we use a comma. 
the pie tasted great. The pie tasted great because Jim followed the directions carefully. So we just flip-flopped this example, but because the because is in the middle, because the because is in the middle, you don't need a comma. So comma, no comma. Okay. We could also use subordination, or excuse me, coordination, using two of our coordinating conjunctions. Jim followed the directions carefully, comma, so, the pie tasted great. The pie tasted great, comma, for, Jim followed. Not a lot of people use the for conjunction this way, but this is the exact way you would use it. And then last, we have therefore. And if we remember correctly, uh, therefore was one of the conjunctive adverbs. And so when we use those, this is where we have to use a comma and a conjunction in front of it. So here we have Jim followed the directions carefully, comma, therefore, comma, the pie tasted great. Okay, so we need that semicolon and that comma after coordinating conjunctions. All right, so here are some practice ones. We'll go through a couple of them when we come back, but let's go back and learn more about the coordinating of these exercises that we talked about over here, just so you can see the difference between the two. So Jill always studied hard. She learned only average, she earned only average grades. Okay, so let's try it with but. Jill always studied hard, comma, but. So use comma, but in between. Okay, although, although Jill always studied hard, comma, she earned on average, she earned average grades. All right, so I wrote it out for you. Although Jill always studied hard, comma, she earned average grades. So we're using although. However, let's put this one in the middle. Now, if we put it in the middle, it's going to use a semicolon before and a comma afterwards. Okay, so Jill always studied hard, semicolon. However, comma, she earned only average grades. Okay, all right, so let's skip down, do one more. Uh, let's do this one, Barry. Okay, Barry hoped to be a professional musician. He practiced daily. Okay, so since, which is our dependent word, if I begin with since, I need a comma. So since Barry hoped to be a, fresh, a professional musician, comma, he practiced daily. And you remember, this is not a complete sentence anymore. She, you don't have to capitalize he. Same with above, you didn't need to capitalize she. Okay, consequently. So we can use consequently like however. Okay, we're going to use it as a conjunctive adverb. So we'll say, Barry hoped to be a professional musician, semicolon, right? Comma, uh, consequently, comma, he practiced daily. Okay, and then four is an easy one. It's just a coordinating conjunction. Barry hoped to be a professional musician, comma, four, he practiced every day. Now again, that doesn't probably sound right to a lot of you because many of us aren't used to using four in that way. Okay, so the rest, I think that's pretty much it. I don't wanna get this too long This too long of a video, but uh, I hope that helps. And it hurts, it, it hurts, it helps to practice. So use these handouts that I'm giving you as practice if you need it, and then check in with your Connect assignments as well.